Hey, and welcome to the Hopcast. Thanks for coming back, everybody. I'm Brad Chmielewski. My name is Ken Hunnameter. And this may be the first time we're ever having a beer that we've had before. Ooh, wow. First time for everything. But yeah, we have, if you look back into our archives, you'll see a much younger pair of gentlemen uh, just <clears throat> drinking one of these out of the bottle. This like, is bunch of heathens this is the hair of the dog adam <laughs> yeah they were drinking hair of the dog fred and adam just passing them back and forth like god oh, give this one a try yeah yeah so we've come a long way uh but yeah we're here to give this a proper tasting and today's going to be a pacific northwest tasting so yeah. uh hair of the dog out of portland and then we have fremont which is out of seattle in the fremont neighborhood okay <laughs> on fremont street may have had some questions about where it where might be. exactly in Seattle. <laughs> okay. Uh but yeah, so this is their their barrel aged Dark Star, uh which is an oatmeal stout that was just released uh this year. Well this is this year's release of it. Okay. Uh just happened to be happened to be out there when they were doing their bottle release at the brewery. And so. then Hair of the Dogs it's not bottle it's not barrel aged, but it's bottle conditioned. Correct. Um and this one's Probably around the same time from that first episode, maybe like 2013, 14. Yeah, yeah for, for a brewery that does does a lot of beers that you can age and they kind of promote their cellar uh, program, they don't actually put anything <laughs> on their labels, so it's hard to see. Well, except Doggy Claws has all the dates on it. Except there. for that one. And maybe they started recently, uh, but this would this one was before then, so the, this is definitely got a, a few... Uh, at least I would say three, four years on it. Okay, which I haven't got any doggy claws yet this year. Favorite beer? Yeah, I wonder if it's still my favorite. I haven't had it I in a know. while. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I used hmm. to geek out on that one. I love that. We did that vertical tasting. Ten of, years, right? Ten years of doggy claws. That was. <laughs> Merry Christmas wanna, to us. You want to see a drunken night? Go back and watch <laughs> those episodes. <laughs> uh, but should we start with this? The hair of the dog? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Old and new? Yes. Let's do it. So uh, here's an old, old world ale, the Adam from Hair of the Dog. So that opened up and we got a little... Pssst, little pssst. So Still that's, carbonated. That's a good sign. Good sign, yes. Um, dark beer, very strong beer. I think this wow. clocks in around 10%. Yeah, big ABV. Yep. And not not quite stoutish, but uh, it's got some ruby. Ruby, amber, yeah. Dark. All right. So I get like a, I do get that cardboardy smell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, we got some oxidation going on. Which is what happens with a lot of these beers. You have people end up storing in their cellars and their closets and their beer fridges. Like I forgot about this one. <laughs> You get old people, like... It happens. Drink your beer, right? Yeah. I think we've talked... We did a thing with Pete Crowley a long time ago, like, drink your beer, man. Like, it's packaged. Like, just mm-hmm. drink it. Enjoy it now. You don't need to be saving it. Yeah, it's... Um, nowadays, you have to go through so many different things just to ensure that you get certain bottles. People have a tendency to not want to open them for that reason. Like, oh, yeah. I worked so hard to get this. I can't just open it. Why would I, why would I drink it? Yeah. And you need like um, that good occasion sometimes to share that like very yeah. unique beer that you got, especially not being from Portland. This beer is like, whoa, we need a special occasion. Bring some friends over, drink your beer. Yeah. Um, so that's our PSA. So you get some of that, you get <clears throat> oxidization, uh, but I do get like a, a maple syrup kind of aroma mm. too. I get like so there's there's two different kinds of oxidation. You get the cardboard like wet wet paper type thing. Yeah. And then there's also kind of like a like a dark dried fruit. That's no, also maybe. another form of Oh, maybe that's um, what I'm getting from it. Oxidation. So I I certainly get that. Are there are they different in the I guess the not necessarily bacteria but the reason for it? Like why you may get cardboard and why you may get uh, like cherry. I think it has to do with like ingredients. Uh, mm-hmm. This is a little bit further out of my realm, but certain malts will promote certain different types of oxidation flavors. Okay. Um, but it but, won't hurt you. No, you'll never get sick from it. It just <laughs> might not taste very good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, let's. Yeah. Makes me think. Not of... all unpleasant. I don't know. It makes me think of like waffles. Or 
waffles for some waffles. Reason. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we could waffle this. Beer. Waffle it up. Hmm. I get more of just like a weird taste. Right. Hmm. Yeah, there's kind of like an astringent malt character over the kind of sweeter malt malt flavors. That's a little bit distracting. Yeah. Oh man, I wish I could. I should have rewatched our 2012 <laughs> episode of our like very uneducated. So we were like, yeah, there's rules. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> it's so strong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I slam this ten percent beer, but like, it's knowing here the dog and their beers. Like he is brewing these very big beers, these old world styles, and these beers. He wants them to be bottle conditioned. He wants mm-hmm. this to happen. So, or he doesn't want it to get like shitty. Uh, shitty but <laughs> he wants you to like save them for a little while because that's mm-hmm. kind of his thought behind it. There are some good flavors in it. I think that that overlying, um, just kind of astringent note is covering all a lot of that up. Yeah. Um, so I think there was some like maybe roasted barley or or something in there that's kind of taking over this beer at this point, um, that making it less than pleasant. Mm-hmm. But I feel like Hair of the Dog maybe they fell out of the love of a lot of people's minds as more breweries came on the scene and the u.s here like because they were doing something very unique for Mm -hmm. years before anyone else right and so it's fun what they've what he's done and like the beers he does because what was an old was an old ale is that what this yeah Mm -hmm. it's like not a lot of people doing old ales no no you've got (laughs) i mean back in those days it was essentially just hair the dog and probably north coast yeah that i remember when you think of old ale and Those now, are the people making it. Now, even if you go in the store, you can't find, like, between all the pale ales and IPAs, it's like, I just want something else. Or the super weird, like, this has got passion fruit and lemon and peanut butter in it. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> that does not sound good. <laughs> <laughs> I will say my palate is adjusting to it, so some of those things that were sticking out before are kind of getting melded into this beer for me. Okay. Um, becoming more and more flavorful and uh, enjoyable. But what should you look for in a... Old ales are that raisin, that like dried yeah, it, fruit kind of characteristic. It'll certainly have some some oxidation qualities, and hopefully, you get kind of the positive oxidation, which is more the dried fruit type character as opposed to the wet cardboard. Uh, but that's part of it, and you just kind of get like the an old cellar type flavor to old ales. They're supposed to be aged, and that's that's just there's a, a unique quality to them. Um, that's hard to describe for some people, but um, I've seen it described as cellar notes for okay. even other styles. <laughs> like, like Beer to Guard has that same yeah cellar note quality, and that's just how it's written out, you know. So it's it's one of those. But if you're a fan of barley wines, you may like yeah the old ales. for sure. Like, I feel like they kind of go together a little bit. Mm-hmm. So malty and sweet, not really hoppy at all. Shouldn't really be. Um, super uh, roasted astringent and it's just it should be smooth and kind of feel rustic like yeah. old grandpa like <laughs> grandpa like <laughs> should taste like my grandpa exactly all right boom well uh, we'll sip on this some more and move on to this fremont yeah yeah okay. old ales yeah. They're old. <laughs> the old, old, old ales. Yeah, the old, super old, old. Yeah, was that old, old world? It's a, old, yeah. old world style. Yeah. And now we're going to a very new, new, new world, new beer. Not new world style, but new beer. Very new beer. It came out maybe a month ago or okay. something like that. Jeez. Okay. Picked it up from the brewery. Um, this beer is all aged in twelve-year-old bourbon barrels. Okay. But some of them have been, the beer has been in the barrel. Some of it is for 18 months, 12 months, or 8 months. So it's a blend of, of those different but it's the uh, maturation same, times. Same 12 year old barrels. Like different. The, the barrel is the same. The beer is the same. The variable is the time spent in the barrel for the beer. Okay. That's probably just 
a little bit of consistency of quality of the beer, right? Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. <clears throat> sure, that has a lot to do with it, but it, it, yeah, I was reading it off the label, and it took me a while to decipher what it was trying to say. <laughs> Just like twelve year barrels, and too many numbers. Eighteen, and 12, eight. <laughs> Carry the two. Yeah, hold on, hold on. I've been drinking. Let me. I can figure this out. All right. Well, that's uh, <laughs> it's got wax on it, so that means it's important. <laughs> yes. So we're gonna have to do some digging. Let's yeah. get started. That's one dark beer. Pretty damn dark. It's called Dark Star for a reason. Yeah. I'm not getting, like, really any color there. No, it's just black. And the head is quite dark as well. It's got some, like, little fingers of beer that kind of, like, cascade down through the head. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. Woo. Get bourbon. Huh. Yeah, it's... I can't miss that bourbon. <laughs> quite, uh, quite boozy on the nose. I feel like get drunk just smelling this beer right so a lot of uh yeah a lot of alcohol fumes coming off that's really what takes over yeah i can't uh, maybe after a few sips as we warm up to it i might be able to pick something else off but right now it's all bourbon booze burn my nostrils yeah. are tingling you got a small amount of vanilla but mostly just straight up fusel alcohol mm -hmm. <laughs> These are some wet barrels. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Man, that is that is a strong beer. It's strong. What what are we at? Like twelve? Four, fourteen and a half. Uh, fourteen and a half, yeah. I I'm not doubting that. Holy shit. Yeah, so this one um this might take a little time in the bottle. Uh, to kind of mellow out a little bit. So you were, we just said drink your beer, and now we're saying, yeah, <laughs> let your beer sit. For this one, I mean, <laughs> sometimes you're doing it for a reason. It's not just like, oh, I bought this beer and I'm gonna throw it in my cellar. Sometimes you buy multiples, you try one, and you're like, I like it, but I can see it benefiting from some time. We're not all screwed with duck here. We don't have like just like, I'll buy ten bottles and try them. <laughs> Every few weeks until I like it. So sometimes, you know, cellaring can be a good thing, but, it, you know, it's cellaring for a purpose and for a reason. Okay. And not just throwing beer in a, a case like a trophy yeah. cabinet. You so know. I'm kind of saying this one, the bourbon, that's definitely stronger than that. And maybe it just needs to mellow out maybe even like a month or two. Not not three years but. No, no. I would, I would even say like six months, a year, yeah. something like that. It's probably much, much more smooth and kind of rounded out. But you can see the potential in the spear for sure. Like once you get past that, there's really, really nice like um, smooth chocolate, vanilla type flavors. Yeah, the body feels like very bold. Like it's like I think because it, it this is an oatmeal stout that they're aging in those barrels, oh, and so that oatmeal is going to lend its its uh, its body and creaminess to okay. the beer, and a little bit of like kind of a slick mouth feel. So, I mean, pretty cool beer. Just uh, yeah, it's it's a strong one right now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. I don't know if I've had much from Fremont Street in general or Fremont Brewing. Mm -hmm. Not Fremont Street, Fremont Brewing. So I'm hard to say like other beers they do i feel like they might have like a can they do they, they do. can they can beers and their special release stuff they do they do quite a bit of barrel aging okay. <clears throat> their brewer um started off at, at goose island and when he was there he, uh he created juliet that was his okay. recipe so matt lincoln shut up really good dude um and so i think he's taken that that barrel aging with him uh, when he left from chicago to seattle so they do they do uh some sour beers obviously cuz that was kind of his thing that okay. his innovation that came up and uh he brought the the bourbon barrel uh program with him as well. So Okay. Well, we, so we may see him back for one of these collaboration. I hope beers. so. I hope okay. so. Yeah. Uh he's a good guy. We was able to go out to Seattle the first time I met him was for that the 25th anniversary video that we put together where we visited all the uh the alumni that had Goose come Island alumni, yeah. Okay. Goose Island alumni and, and interviewed them for that. So oh, cool. it was cool. Nice. Uh, yeah, well, 
Nice to see. It's always good to see when these people leave a uh, established brewery like that and go on to like mm-hmm. still make great beer. It's yeah. not like you move on and be like you fail. Like oh. <laughs> I didn't know. There's some doing. pretty pretty notable names on that <laughs> on that trip. So like got to hang out with Phil Wymore at Perennial and then Matt Brindelson at Firestone and then I mm-hmm. drove up uh, and saw Matt Lincoln at at Fremont. Mm-hmm. So I think Matt Brindelson starting a new. Brewery, right? I this is the first time I'm hearing it. Yeah. So mm. did you just break news? Maybe. Oh no, not Matt Bernos. I'm thinking <laughs> wrong person. <laughs> I was I'm like, thinking, wow. Uh, Oakshire Matt. Yes, yes, he is. Ale Song Brewing. Ale Song Brewing. Mm-hmm. Wrong person. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Different Matt barrel aged guy. Yeah. On the West Coast. See how you mix those up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, uh, but pretty fun beer. Mm-hmm. Like, man, I feel like I'm... I think your your palate can adjust to this beer Let's too. See. Like get through the per- first couple of sips where that bourbon is pretty straight in your face, yeah, and uh, starts to mellow out a little bit as you adjust. But I could definitely see. I mean, this one's pretty fresh, so I could see right. the you know holding on to it for just a little bit of time. It's also probably good we had to pair the dog to kind of get our palate attuned to the like, yeah. sweetness and dark sugars and dark fruits alcohol as well yeah the alcohol. <laughs> yeah it, it would have been even more jarring had we just gone from a pale ale straight into this fremont dark star yeah but uh yeah it's it's good beer okay nice well yeah so hang on to yours for a little longer maybe and then open it up because it's tasty it is tasty it just needs a little uh little rounding that's all cheers cheers